There are so many accessories for photography. Some of them are really useful and others are not that good. So today I'm gonna to talk about the accessories I use on a daily basis, as well as some that I really don't want you to waste your money on. And if you're a beginner looking to buy your first camera, later on I've got a tip for you that can save you so much money. So counting down from five, the fifth best accessory I think that you should get is the good old rocket blower. Not really an exciting bit of kit, but an essential accessory nevertheless. This thing goes everywhere with me and whenever I change my lens, I'm always blowing in the sensor area and then in the back of the lens as well. This is where most of those dust spots that show up in your photographs live, more so than on the front of your lens. And with mirrorless cameras, there's no way to avoid it. And one of these rocket blowers will get rid of most of the dust apart from those really stubborn bits. There are some of these blowers with filters on, but I see that as a bit of overkill. The theory is that this is sucking in air, and if it does suck in a bit of dust, it would blow it onto your sensor. But I haven't found that this is the case. This one is a basic one, and it works really well. On the other hand, the fifth worst bit of kit that stays in my drawer is one of these, the Pano Head. Today, with the power of computing, together with the software that we've got to hand, it's really easy to stitch images together. So much so that a pano head is not really needed for everyday landscape photography. In fact, I shoot a lot of my panos handheld in conjunction with the AEL button. It's such a quick way of doing it. You can grab your pano and keep hiking. But this pano head doesn't come with me at all. It stays at home and I'm so glad I didn't buy one of the expensive ones. The fourth best item I always have with me and use every day is a good old Swiss army knife. This thing has helped me out so much, from tightening QR plates to opening up my lunch bag. You can also switch this out for a Leatherman or a non-branded multi-tool. There's nothing worse than your quick release plate coming loose and not having a way of tightening it, especially when you're miles from your car and the light is going off. Now, multi-tools can be quite heavy, and I think it's because they've got the pliers built into them. And that's why I go with the Swiss Army knife. It's small, compact and light, it just lives in my bag. When it comes to the fourth worst accessory, it is the UV filter. Back in the 90s, when film was all the rage, these came in really handy because you had certain film stock that was sensitive to ultraviolet light. But nowadays, you don't really need this at all. The glass that you see in front of your sensor, that's actually a UV filter. So if you have one of these on the front of your lens, you're basically doubling up UV filters. And to get the best image quality, you don't want to be putting a cheap filter on the front of your really expensive lens. And if you were thinking it's extra protection for your front element, you just want to put your lens hood on because if you were to drop your camera and it landed nose down, this would break before your lens. Well, that's a theory I go by anyway. Now, as I go through this list, can you think of anything that you've bought that you regret? Or is there something that you just can't live without? Let me know in the comments below. The third best thing to have, again, isn't a photography accessory as such, but it's a head torch. These come in so handy. It's amazing when you're at a sunset, how you get carried away, and before you know it, it's pitch black. Or when you get to a sunrise location, and it's not quite bright enough to see what you're doing. And on an astrophotography shoot, these are a must. As soon as it does get dark, you'll really want one of these, because it's annoying having your phone with a torch on the back, holding that, and then trying to change your lens as well. Having one of these on your head, you just turn it on, you can change the lens, you can pour a cup of coffee, you can do pretty much anything you want, you'll be able to see what you're doing. Now, if you are shooting astrophotography, just make sure you get one with a red light on it. It'll be much easier on your eyes. What I tend to do is have it on the white light until I've got everything set up, and then switch it across to the red light. In fact, I wish the camera companies would have a red option for the back of the camera or in the EVF. Red light is easier on your eyes and it means you don't lose your night vision. So basically, once your eyes get used to the light that's about, you can kind of see what's going on. But when you get a light shone in your face from the back LCD screen or with the EVF, you'll be surprised at how blind you'll be in that one eye for a short while. The third thing I'd say to avoid is more of a camera than an accessory, and it's the 360 camera. Now, there's part of me that really wants to like these. They're fun and quite exciting, but they're very distracting to my photography. I bought the Insta360 ONE X back in 2018, and I thought it'd be great because I could just film with it and then crop into that later, and even take photos of the whole sphere and then crop into that. But the resolution is just not there. I think if the resolution on this was about 15K or it shot 70 to 80 megapixels, then it would give that option of cropping into it and getting a good image. 
but it is just a bit of a gimmick camera to me. Now onto the second best thing. I shoot from a tripod, especially when doing astrophotography, and to quickly and easily switch from landscape to portrait is an absolute godsend. It speeds up the process no end, and if the light is fleeting or it's just about to disappear and you want to get a different aspect ratio, you can really quickly. Now, if you say I do just fine with my ball head in switching my camera by 90 degrees, you really haven't experienced an L bracket. So if you do shoot from a tripod, just get one. Now, if your camera does have a flippy screen like the a7 IV, you do have to have a bit of a workaround. I did a video on that recently. As for the second worst accessory, it's the Wacom tablet. I got one of these a long time ago and it really set my editing back a lot. I get the idea of it, but it really didn't work for me and I ended up wasting a lot of money. And this goes for loop decks and speciality gaming pads as well. I've got the Shuttle Pro version two and it stayed in the bottom of my drawer again. The idea is that you program all of these buttons to certain shortcuts that you use a lot of the time. Because in essence, editing is pressing buttons and moving sliders. So if all those shortcut buttons are confined to one small space, in theory, you're not moving your hand as much and you're saving time when editing. I think the only one that I ever got used to was the G13 from Logitech and I used it for video editing, but I was on a really big job and I was working eight to 10 hours a day every single day it still took me a couple of months to memorize where those buttons were without having to look at it or without having to look at a cheat sheet. As for the top, the best and the worst, the best bit of gear by far is the capture clip from Peak Design. This has enabled me to capture so many more photographs than I used to be able to. It comes in two parts. You've got this bit which attaches to your shoulder strap and then you've got this bit, which is a quick release plate for the bottom of your camera. Now, I can't believe it took me so long to get one of these, but the thing that put me off was it was so expensive. I think it comes in at around about 70 or 80 pounds. And this was the one thing that was holding me back from buying one of these. But when I finally bit the bullet and got one, it really changed how I took pictures. Now, the straps on your backpack tend to be quite solid. So this means the camera's solid as well. So when you're scrambling or hiking, your camera's not dangling down like it would be with a normal camera strap. And then when you see something you want to photograph, you just take it off, take the photograph, and put it back and keep going. As for the worst bit of kit that I've got, it's one of these clip-in filters. I got a 10-stop ND from a company, I think, called STC. I think Case make them as well but they're really not worth it. Again, I wanted to like this accessory and I was really excited to get it. The glass quality is fantastic. And when you put it into your camera, it takes a great photograph, but it is a hassle to get in and out of your camera. And ultimately this is the major problem with it. There have been a few times where I've almost touched the sensor with it, not to mention the extended amount of time that your sensor is exposed to the elements when you're trying to get this thing in. So when I've been in environments when it's raining or when it's dusty, I've just avoided using it. And it's ended up again in that drawer back at home. Now, if you're a beginner photographer just starting from scratch, one piece of advice I'd give you is not to buy the latest and greatest. I see comments on forums and Facebook groups all the time telling beginners to get the top of the range kit with a view to buying once and buying the best. And photography is really expensive, but it is modular and this is the key. So you can buy a camera and then buy lenses and then get more lenses and then swap out the body, but keep those lenses and so on and so forth. It took me years to build up the kit that I have, and this is the best way to go about it. And if you want to get more creative in your photography, this video covers exactly that. And it's a surprisingly easy process. I'll see you next time.